Good morning and welcome to the Episcopalians Together in Oxford online service for Sunday, February 14th. You can download a copy of the bulletin and this week's kid story from www.ccqf.org. We hope you enjoy the service. Good morning and on behalf of Episcopalians Together in Oxford, St. Peter's Church, Christ Church, Quaker Farms, we welcome you to our service on this February 14th, the Feast of St. Valentine the Martyr. We're glad to have you with us. Reverend Ellen is under the weather. It's not COVID or anything serious, but she sends her love to you and will be back with us next week. Um, we got a Valentine joke. Here it goes. What is the best candy to give your girlfriend, wife, or mother? Give up? It's her, she's kisses. <laughs> that one's for you, honey. Mwah. Okay, good enough. So let's begin with the opening sentences. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. And let us pray the collect for St. Valentine the martyr. Most gracious Heavenly Father, you gave St. Valentine the courage to witness to the gospel of Christ, even to the point of giving his life for it. Help us to endure all suffering for the love of you and to seek you in all our hearts. For you alone are the source of life and love. Grant that we may have the courage to love and to be strong witnesses to your truth, to our friends and family and to the whole world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now we have a couple new songs of praise today from, from Caitlin Wentz and from Catherine Brown. And you'll find the words in your bulletin. This one's pretty easy to catch on to. And we'll do it several times during the course of the next several months so that you can learn. So now stand and let us sing.
Catherine, that was great. Our first reading today may be found on page one of your bulletin, and it's being read today by Maddie Sastro. The first reading is from John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12, 16b, and 18 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is so, also we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, who he has not seen. In this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother or sister. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the greater glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Some people are surprised to learn that Valentine was not the founder of Hallmark Cards. No, Valentine was a priest living in third century Rome when Emperor Claudius was persecuting and martyring Christians. Also, Claudius uh, outlawed new marriages, new weddings, because he th thought that the young men would be better soldiers in his wars, and so he would not allow them. But as a result, sexual promiscuity just was rampant and, and horrible in Rome in the eyes of Christians. So Valentine secretly led weddings for those who sought his help. However, Father Valentine was caught and he was sentenced to death. He was taken to the prison where he met the jailer's daughter. She was blind. So Valentine and the jailer's daughter spent much time talking and Jesus and Valentine introduced her to Jesus and she accepted Jesus into her heart. And Valentine prayed for her and she miraculously returned to sight. That was something. Shortly afterwards, Valentine was fed to the lions in the Colosseum, but he left behind in his cell a letter for the young woman. And he talked about how much she had meant to him and he signed it, your Valentine thereby creating the first Valentine. Now, I think this is relevant because it seems to me that during this pandemic, we are living in a time when love is in short supply. Romantic love still carries on for some, but I know single men and single women who are extremely lonely because they don't have the opportunities for meeting and dating as they once did before the pandemic. And beyond that, a Scientific American poll from this summer reports that 61% of all Americans are experiencing loneliness to one degree or another. Now, for some people, this loneliness is acute and it's 
painful. For others, we might just feel a little disconnected. This is what Kathy Garcia was saying in a text she sent to me. Kathy Garcia is a member of Christ Church and she wrote, people are struggling and it's so hard to try to help. Not being able to see people in person and feeling like you can't hug or touch them makes us all feel disconnected. Human touch is one primary way that we feel and experience love. World-known uh, psychologist Virginia Satter says that, quote, we need four hugs a day just to survive, eight hugs a day for maintenance, and 12 hugs a day for growth. Likewise, now that we're deprived of human touch, this only upsets our sense of well-being because we are social creatures. And this lack of touch and hugs can result in an increase of personal stress, depression, and anxiety, all of which is going up, according to polls. Lack of touch and hugs can actually harm our skills in intimacy and personal relationships. Social scientists are now calling the pandemic of hugs and touch as skin hunger. Skin hunger. They say, quote, skin hunger is when we notice a discrepancy between the amount of touch that we want and the amount that we receive, unquote. So there are many of us who know we're experiencing skin hunger, but there are many others of us who haven't felt about it. Maybe it's just the sense of disease that we're not even conscious of. So what to do? Well, to quote an old AT&T commercial, reach out and touch somebody. What would Jesus do? Jesus commands us to find ways to express love to one another, even during pandemics. And we find that if we give love, we get love back in return. Emails, text messages, phone calls are all great. But for me, the most effective way of reaching out is to send notes, cards, and the like, mailed by U.S. Mail. Sending valentines is one of my favorite things to do. I have sent valentines to my church school young people for years. I send funny valentines to the people closest to me, my friends and my family, and even my wife. Each year I receive a valentine from an old high school friend of mine who over the past 40 odd years has collected thousands and thousands of names and addresses of people he knows and then he sends out these original valentines that are pretty funny. During the year I send out reading cards notes, letters, postcards, and thank you cards very often. Why? Well, you see, what do those people receive in the mail? Bills, advertisements, and other junk. But I've been told by recipients that they so appreciate a handwritten note or card or letter. Now, this week I received a card from a former parishioner with whom I've not had contact in over 15 years. And I don't know how she found my address, but she did. And she sent me a note saying that she had come across 
a stash of thank you notes that I've written her. I thanked her for many things because she was so active in serving my last church. And she told me in that, let her know that even now, those words gave her comfort. You know, you just don't know the impact that love can have upon other people. So during this time of skin hunger, if we are proactive in reaching out to touch someone with love, then you'll often find that you get love back coming to you. Jesus said, the more you give, the more you receive. Why don't you reach out and touch somebody today? Don't just think about it, just do it. And I'll conclude with the words of contemporary American theologian, Reese Witherspoon, who says, you always gain by giving love. Amen. And now would you please turn to the prayers of the people found on page two of your bulletin. It's called the Litany of Love. O oh Lord, reorient us around love. Our God is love. Refashion us to love's image. Our way is love. My love, Christ came to the earth. By love, Christ humbled himself to become human. By love, Christ preached God's kingdom. By love, Christ healed and fed the multitudes. By love, Christ absorbed within himself the wrongdoing of all people. By love, Christ shortened the distance between ourselves and God. By love, Christ put death to rest. By love, Christ rose up into glorified life. May love shatter us and rebuild us anew. May love encompass us and protect us. May love reform us from violence and power seeking. May love teach us to walk in the new way, the beautiful way. May we be liberated from expectations placed on us by religions, societies, empires, and cultures and delivered into love's hands, following love's direction. And now let us offer up our own prayers and thanksgivings, both aloud and silently. Lord, we pray for the healing of those people from St. Peter's Church in need of healing. We pray for those from Christ Church in need of healing, especially Isaac and Jim and Jean, Sophia, Rich, Laura, Irene. And now turning to page two in the bulletin, let us offer up our confession to Almighty God, confession form which is towards the bottom of the page. Let us say together, Father God, you have loved us abundantly, but we have not been as generous with you or with others. Forgive us and inspire us to love the way Jesus loved us with all his love, soul and mind and heart. Amen. May Jesus, who died on the cross to save you, restore you and infuse you with his love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There is a cartoon at the end of the sermon that um, we included where it says, um, I sent you a hug in my mind. Did you receive it? And it shows 
shows uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy hugging. Well, right now, we want to send you a hug. Whether you are alone or with someone else, we want to send you a hug, which is the peace of the Lord. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. These services are brought to you by our donors who support both St. Peter's and Christ Church. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us so that we can all worship together. And now, all good things come from you, O oh Lord, and from what you've given us, we give back to you. Amen. And now it's time for us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now please stand for our concluding song. What a beautiful name. Again, this is new. Um, we invite you, however, to join in the chorus, which is written on page three. What a beautiful name.
Thank you. That was great. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon those you love today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. And now the dismissal. Let us go forth and share the love of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And the only announcement is to once again thank Don Peck for hanging in there with us. Yay, Don. Bye-bye. <laughs>